Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third episode of Lockdown Lunch with Kelly Ransom and friends. Um, today, oh my god. <laughs> today, um, I have one of my best, best friends on. She moonlights as a rat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, her name is Hi. Stephanie Tugas. Hello. She's coming live from Jamaica Plain, Massachusetts. And she's an environment. Hold on, you froze for me. Hold on. I can't hear you anymore, Kelly. I don't know what is happening. <laughs> I don't know if anyone can hear me or not. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Hold on. One second, I don't know what happened. Hmm. Hold on. I don't know if Kelly just broke or if it's just me. <laughs> Hi, people. I don't know what happened to Kelly. Kelly just broke or if it's just me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we lost our our her host. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Just a learning experience for us all. So I hope you kept everyone entertained while I was gone. I'm sure you did. Awkwardly sitting. I didn't know if I was just like, like No, I was like watching you on my phone. But sorry, everyone. Thank you for uh, understanding that this is an experiment. The rat mask broke the, the Yeah, it couldn't handle it. It was just too much. Um, so I'm going to start off with a question that I ask each guest. Mm hmm What day is it? Friday. Woo! It's the weekend, but it's like the same because every day is the same now. Every day. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike. I can't hear you. <laughs> of course it would be this episode. <laughs> Gets all messed up. Turn your mic back on. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I don't know what's going on. I'm breaking your computer. You're just that wonderful and perfect. So hopefully we don't keep losing the sound, but if we do, thank you for your patience at home. It's Friday. Everything's a little weird. It's true. Um. So... You are an environmental scientist. I am. And how do you work from home right now as an environmental scientist? Well, it's a lot of like desktop research, if you will. So I'm a 
wetlands enforcement officer for the Environmental Protection Agency doing Clean Water Act enforcement, but mainly wetland stuff. So, you know, I've just been planning my field work, hoping we can still get out there in the in the summer where I do most of my field work. So going out to we EPA takes on some of the bigger wetland violations, like a hundred acres of filled wetlands. So it's a lot of work. So I'm doing a lot of background research right now, but. And what's the field? So the field is like physically going out to where the wetland violations occur and, you know, working with the violator, which sometimes, you know, they're corporations, there's farmers, there's all sorts of people fill wetlands <laughs> illegally and illegally means without a permit. So, okay. and so suit up, you know, bushwhack, dig hole, dig a lot of dirt. Really? Yeah. That's holes. Like I'm, I'm really Have you been going in your yard and like, my ending yard, Kelly, <laughs> to make a play. I have a slab of cement. Yeah. But, <laughs> I will say EPA, there has been some headlines saying EPA yes. uh, is not like enforcing, and that's not true. I mean, the policy. Well, what is, what is, is that the exact EPA, headline ish? What's the rumor? Oh, well, there's been, like, people have asked me, like, there's some headlines being like EPA, like, is not enforcing laws right now. And that's not true. Like, we're still all working, and there's a lot of stuff, like, Essentially, we're not um, going to seek penalties for non-compliance with routine monitoring and reporting, like required okay. by. But like everything is based on the, you know, they still if they don't follow a reporting requirement, they still have to like explain why, and it has mm -hmm. to be because of the pandemic. So we're not just like free for all, but yeah. we still would go out like if there was an imminent like threat. Or environmental thing like we would go out there but you know this is all brand new to us so we're all we're just trying to work with everyone right so we're still we're still protecting the environment <laughs> good i'm glad to hear that um so when you're out of this like what are you yeah. planning like going and checking out wetlands and yeah just going out to our field sites we have a lot of big rest or so EPA seeks full restoration of wetlands that were destroyed. So yeah. we go out to field sites and, you know, we work with con contractors and we, you know, work to restore the wetland that was there and all the functions and values that that wetland provided because wetlands are important. They are. And Can you tell us one reason why wetlands are important in case well, people watching don't know? <laughs> wetlands are important because they well they can serve a lot of different functions like uh flood storage so places that don't have that get rid of their wetlands are more susceptible to flooding so that's one really okay. from an economical standpoint i'd say that's a pretty important reason to keep wetlands around right obviously wildlife habitat they filter out pollutants as well they're just they provide you know uh streamlines to, or Shore stability. There are lots of reasons to keep wetlands around. <laughs> and are you in just Massachusetts? Um, so EPA Region 1 is all of New England. Oh, wow. So you do a lot of like little day trips and stuff? Yeah, overnight too, depending where. Northern Vermont is like five hours, four hours away. So <laughs> didn't you go really close to Canada? I could see Canada. Where it was freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can get cold up there. Okay. It's always. <laughs> I remember. But yeah, you me that. I like my job. I'm lucky to have it, and I'm lucky to to be employed right now. Yes, still. Yes. <sighs> so, um, I've been hearing other headlines um, that the effects of everyone kind of staying home right now and businesses being shut down and people not commuting and stuff that there's changes. There's changes in the environment. Yeah. Is this true? I'm what yes, I mean, I'm not out there like with my like monitoring equipment, but <laughs> you know, like you have to think about all the the fuel and everything that airplanes use, that cars yeah. use. Like it is having an effect. Like so 
I mean, this, I do think this is a positive for the environment for sure. Like giving like yeah. a, a little breath of fresh air, if you will. Yes. <laughs> but, um, um, you know. <laughs> I don't know why the cat always chooses to use the litter box during the live stream, but he does. So if you hear anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you are also in the middle of closing on a house right now. Yes. We what have not the heck had is that like during a lockdown pandemic situation? Uh, well, I mean, we started the process before uh, this all fish hit the pan, but we, you know, it was crazy. We hadn't locked in a mortgage rate and the mortgage rates were like, <sighs> The craziest they've been. Yeah. So we finally locked in a rate that was reasonable, and okay. we haven't packed up anything, but we're still we're still closing on next Friday. So, oh my gosh, it's scary. I mean, it's a huge investment, and like so many getting laid off. Like, yeah, my husband alone at job anytime. Like, it's just a lot of uncertainties. But gotta keep. Keep trekking. Oh my gosh, this cat! I swear to God, it's Rick. Um, Rick. <laughs> it's Rick. Um, he he needs attention. Mm -hmm. Um. So your husband Adam, he's also a scientist. He is. He and is, is he still working. Yes, he's working. He's doing some remote stuff. He's still been. So he works at Beth Israel at um in a lab so okay. he's the lab manager there so he's still going into work sometimes to like deal with deliveries right. he's doing some off-site stuff i mean he but you know there for i think beth israel all the hospitals are going into debt right now because all their regular appointments have been canceled so wow. they're losing money i assume he so, can't you know do, just, he can't do lab work from home right that's not how it works. No, definitely not. <laughs> so I want to get to the part where I know that a lot of people are tuning in for, and I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but if you've been going outside, there's maybe they were always there, maybe they weren't. There are birds everywhere, squeaking and squawking all the time, all different kinds yeah. of birds. There's so and many. I'm so lucky to have Stephanie on today because she is a birder. Did you know that's a thing, Kelly? I know that's a thing because of you. <laughs> so a birder, what, goes out and bird washes? A birder is anyone that goes out specifically to observe birds and look at birds and write down the birds they see it's called you can have a bird journal where you write down every bird you saw when you saw it okay saw it. people have lifers where it's like a special bird to them that they've been like meaning to see and they finally see it and that's called a lifer wow but there's what's, a your, what's your bird your lifer bird i haven't really decided what my lifer you have is decided. yet i'll have to go on that one but I still but yeah so there's a whole community of birders here in Massachusetts in Boston just look around and you'll notice them but I can talk a little bit about uh what you need to yes. start how do birding. we how do we start birding at home because I'm I need a new hobby well so for most people stuck inside I'd say first get a bird feeder to attract the birds to your house. Any kind of um, bird feeder? Just like with seeds? Yeah, I would look, you can Google, look online. You know, you want to keep it, depending, if it's just like on a pole tall enough so like cats and dogs can't get to it, you know. Okay. It's hard to keep squirrels out, but there are some that can. And okay. um, so you need that. Um, for So another good thing to have are binoculars. So oh, okay. I, have, I have two pairs. So I have this really crappy pair I got from Amazon. Um, it's 
I use this for when I'm on the go. So it's always in my purse. Okay. Those are your purse, your purse binoculars. binoculars. So they're pretty crappy, but they, they do, they get the job done. So. Oh, look at you. You look like a birder. Yep. So these are my actual good pair. So this wow. is, um, these are from Eagle Optics. They're the Shrike. Um, and they will run you, they're about somewhere between 70 and a hundred dollars. You can spend okay. up thousands of dollars on binoculars. Um, so when you're wow. looking, so when you're looking for a pair of binoculars, you'll want to look at the the numbers. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's like eight by forty-two. Oh yeah, I can see it. So I would say for like binoculars, you're going to carry around just for birding. You want like something between seven and ten magnification. So that's like the first number, the eight. And then the other number I'm not as familiar with. I know it has to do with this. Uh, width here on the, okay. the lens that's further away from you but like the, the bigger that number I think the heavier the binoculars so this I think this 8 by 42 is an excellent pair or specs to have on your binoculars anything higher than like a 10 magnification yeah. would be like to almost too magnified for a binocular. So it will make the bird look like really shaky. So if you want to keep it between seven and 10, I would you don't say. don't want a shaky bird. No. And if you get that high of magnification, you want like a spotting scope, but I'm not even that intense yet, but. They're yeah. out. But so you need binoculars or they're good to have. And then you also want a bird guide. Okay. Do you so, have a recommendation? Well, so this is like the bird Bible for all birders. It's called the Sibley Guide to Birds. Okay. This is like the guide. It's beautiful. So this is drawings. So. Oh, wow. Okay. So all the birds and the different, you know, different plumages, different, like it's winter, breeding, juvenile, adult, you know. So that's a good one. But I'm going to reference this one. This is birds of North America. These are photographs. So that might be better for the beginner, you think? Yeah. So I thought we could talk about some of the common birds you might see at your bird feeder. Are you open to that, Kelly? I'm open to that. I, we, have, we have a question. I want to try and use this feature I haven't used yet. Let me. Can you see that? Um, what? Uh, oh, that's so good. What's the <laughs> I haven't used that feature yet. Uh, my most precious sighting. <laughs> Thank you, Deb. A, a must see bird. Well, let's see. So, a bird I really want to see, but I've only seen dead, is the American oh. woodcock. Okay. It's, um, it's like a brownish, there's actually a lot of videos of it. It like kind of taps at the ground and does this like sway moving like this and it has a wicked long beak. Okay. So it's prone to window strikes a lot, which is sad because they oh. have eyes on like the side of their head. So they collide into windows a lot and then oh. die. So you can see them dead a lot. It's really sad, but they're really fun birds. Okay. And that's a must see that I've actually only seen dead, but not alive. Okay. And my most precious sighting was last year. I still think about this bird all the time. Let me show it to you. I love you. It was. So last year I was just sitting on my couch by my rats and I looked out the window and I saw this beautiful common yellow throat warbler. Oh, that's really pretty. Right? So this is a, a bird that's not here year round. It, it passes through. I don't think it's here year round. It passes through during migration. So migration is between like, you know, it's in the summer. It starts in April. Okay. And that's when you start to see all these different birds passing through. So it's a good time to get, get out and try to see some birds. Right around right now. Theater. Yeah. Or your theater. What am I trying? Your feeder. Your feeder. All right, so talk about some birds that we can okay. see here in so This Boston. bird I've been seeing a, a lot around JP. It's yes. called a red-bellied woodpecker. Oh, I wouldn't mind seeing that. No, he's a cute little guy. 
And let me play you what it sounds like. Let me know if you can hear this. Okay. okay. Can you hear it at all? Yeah. I feel like I've heard that. You have. Oh. <laughs> I know you have. But now I know that I'm hearing a red belly. <laughs> you probably have heard all these birds before, but you don't, you know. Now you know. So that's it's very informative. Pecker. You'll see that at your, the, uh, your, why do I keep saying theater or feeder? <laughs> your bird theater. Um, this bird is the downy woodpecker. So this guy you'll definitely see. Wait, I can't figure out this camera. There we go. That's good. The downy woodpecker. He has a little red like dot on his head. Okay. So it's our smallest um, woodpecker species, and you'll certainly see this at a bird feeder. He loves bird feeders. Okay. <laughs> um, here we got another bird. Oh, this, oh, a northern flicker. I've seen this one in uh, Jamaica Plain before. I can't. What? I've never seen that. Yep. I saw a juvenile. He was, I think, just fledg fledging. So, learn, you know, becoming going from being like a gross little like hairless or featherless bird to like getting sure. into feathers and learning to fly. It's called fledging. So okay. I think he had like kind of stumbled out of a nest and was hooked onto someone's window was walking to work and it was just like squawking at itself in the mirror. <laughs> but they're really, <laughs> cool. they, have, um, they have yellow feathers underneath. They're very cool. Um, and then I haven't seen any yellow birds yet. Yellow birds? <laughs> I'll get I'll just get a yellow them. bird in general in Rosendale. I haven't seen any. They exist, and I'll find one for you. Yes. So, well, here's a bird that you've probably heard a lot. It's called a black capped chickadee. Oh, yeah. And I'm down with the chickadee. You know the chickadee? Oh, they yeah. They hang out here all the time. And that is, it makes like a sound like, um, like, I love that you have the sounds. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> or like a, the hamster dance. Um, <laughs> let's see if you can hear this. Uh, oh, wait, let me. What the hell? It's not loud enough. That's okay. I can just. Oh. Oh, yeah. You've probably heard that. Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's like, <laughs> so that guy. <laughs> uh, um, so here's, here's a saucily guy. You'll see this guy at your birth. The tufted tit mouse. I have never seen guy? a tit mouse. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, he's around. And he will be at your feeder and he'll... He'll bully the other birds until the woodpecker comes in, and then he'll get bullied by the woodpecker. There's a whole they like play. they have like clicks. Yeah, like there's some that will outcompete others, and you know their beaks are suited for different nuts. Like it, there's a lot going on out there that you don't even know. Now you know. I didn't know any of this. This is the most educational guest I've had. <laughs> no offense to Becca or Oli, you guys are great, but. <laughs> I'm learning stuff right now. You're watching it live. And then here's another saucily named little guy. A white-breasted nuthatch. They have great names. You, They sure do. So this guy will definitely be at your bird feeder. All and right. you can see kind of the upturned beak. Um, that bird, he, so it kind of like creeps down trunks and stuff. Okay. With like it's like head out, like... I don't know if you can see this picture, but that's what it looks like oh, on yeah, the, it's like the tree. Chilling on the side. So you'll definitely, it's like, yeah. So you'll see that <laughs> at your bird feeder for sure. So you've probably seen or heard these birds, the Northern Mockingbird. Oh, I've been seeing a lot of those actually. And I had never really yeah. seen, they have like white on the tail. Yeah, or and the most discerning is the um, white uh, band on the um, the wing. So you'll yeah, notice yeah. those ones. But they're awesome. They're, they're so uh, fascinating. They can mimic 
you know, they're not like a parrot, but they can really mimic a lot of noises. So a lot of times I'll actually hear Mockingbird doing all the car alarm sounds. I was going to say, is this the car alarm bird? Yeah. So they kind of mimic their, their urban. Um, this is a pretty bird you might see at your theater. It's called the hermit thrush. I think um, you need to start a birding show for real. Look at that. <laughs> so this is a cool guy. This is another one I've only seen dead, but I know that oh. they're out there. So you can, let's see if they have oh, a pretty, pretty song. Let's see more. Sounds like so a flute. A, yeah. So that's a hermit thrush. Don't worry, I'm not gonna go through every species of bird. You, you, you do you, girl. Go get okay. it. I mean, I know that I've seen lots of cardinals, bluebirds, or blue jays. Yes. And um. Yeah, we'll get a couple of those. Okay, I'm not gonna. Oh, I'm, so I'm gonna let you. Here's some stuff. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to your bird. Um, here's some. <laughs> Here are some finches you might see. So they kind of have the fatter beaks. So we have oh, here cute. a house. Here's a house finch. So it kind of looks like someone just threw some like paint at it. <laughs> um, well, you'll definitely see that one at your feeder. And then also the purple finch, which is similar, just more oh, colored. Pretty. Yeah. So they're around. And what you probably, so when you see like those bright colors you're probably seeing a male bird usually okay. most birds are sexually dimorphic meaning that the one sex has a different look or color or whatever than the other sex and so a lot of females in birds are kind of drab looking like you can see the female is just like nothing like oh, yeah, whatever. She's kind of brown. I mean, she's still beautiful in her own way. But yes, of course. Or it's like the female, it's female's choice. So they have to choose like the, the you know, the sexiest bird. So that's why the male. Oh, I like are all that. Up and the females We're don't have. Talking, right? Yeah. So that's those. Um, oh, here's a bird that you've probably heard. It's called a white-throated sparrow. They're pretty in the when they're in their breeding plumage. Oh, I they have that I little yellow. yellow. I might confuse those with chickadees, actually. You know, black-capped chickadees have the black cap. You know, here's I'm learning, girl. I'm learning. Can you hear it? Yes, this is very relaxing. Where are you listening to your bird sounds? On another computer. No, but like what? Oh, you YouTube. Have to record it or? There's like millions of bird nerds that just upload like videos and sounds of birds. Um, bird nerds. So here's another one, a dark-eyed junco you've definitely seen. They kind of hang out in groups. Sometimes you'll see them on the ground. They come during winter time a lot. Okay. Um, and so you know what a cardinal looks like yes i've seen mad cardinals they seem mean they they're aggressive they're they're yeah so but what you might not so do you do you ever see this one the female cardinal is female much cardinal? i don't know so i'm gonna try and distinguish now yeah so that's the female plumage and then here's the male and do you know what they sound like kelly you've probably heard them let's see They kind of have like a pew, pew. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I just heard one outside yeah. right now. So it's like, it's just nice to be able to recognize all the stuff going on around you. Wait, I wanted to find you a yellow bird before I finish sh showing you all the birds. Hold no, on. if you did this often, I would watch this. I have a yellow bird for you. I feel like I'm learning a lot. Uh, um, oh, so here's the American, all American bird, American goldfinch. I would love to see that. 
You will. I've seen them in JP. They're around. And I have a set up a bird feeder and wait. It'll yeah. come. You just wait. Not like you have anything else to do. I got nothing but time, girl. <laughs> Let's play. The this is the American goldfinch. Oh, that's a chatty little bird. Yep. Oh, I think Pickle. Uh, Pickle's hearing the birds. <laughs> you want well, to see the birds? This is a YouTube video that someone uploaded that's three hours of an American goldfinch. So um, Pickle's really into this conversation. Yeah. Oh, little Pickle. I should find... Here's a lame bird that you'll see everywhere, the, the robin. I like robins. I always see that as a sign of spring. Yeah. I'm over them, but oh, I'm so I'm sorry. They're babe. they're not cool. I have one. Wait, I have one more bird that I see a lot. They're like yeah. black, but like oily, slick looking, and they have yellow beaks. That's probably a European starling. Okay, I was I've been calling them starlings, like I know, but like I didn't actually know. Um, so those birds are an introduced species from Europe, so they're not native. So we have a few. So starlings and all the sparrows like the dumpy sparrows you see on the ground like are you those are, those are house sparrows and those are also uh introduced here from other places from and europe. pigeons are those worth i think at? yeah those are not i don't think those are native as well pigeons but, are uh, native no, I don't think so. I should know that. I don't think they are. <laughs> wow. But um, so those are all introduced species. And uh, what's do you know the dove is related to the pigeon? I've seen some doves, I think. They're like yeah. brown. Can you hear that kind of like hoot sound? That's not probably not an owl, it's just a dove. Oh. I don't like doves, but that's my own problem. I Why do, don't you like doves? They have like dumb little heads and like fat bodies. I just don't like them. But like a lot of people do like doves. So like I'm not going to hate like people find them soothing. And is, it, is a turtle dove a different dove? There's different species of doves. We have mourning doves here. Okay. Um, I don't know if we have turtle doves or not, but when I was in Mexico City, there was really cute little Inca doves. So I like those doves. Okay. So you but, don't hate all doves? No, I just don't like mourning doves. They okay. can, <laughs> I could take or leave them. Oh, there's one more bird I wanted to show you. Yay! People are loving this. Uh, Kamal says this show is for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, here's a bird that people flip their shit over when Whoa. it shows up. PG-13. Oh, my gosh. So this is the painted bunting. So a couple of years ago, one showed up in Central Park when I lived in New York City, and people went bananas. Like, people trying to crowded. Find it. Yeah, trying to find it. So, like, there's a whole network of birders, Facebook, like, uh, ev everything, and they talk about where, like, the sightings of birds, and people go looking for them. So when this painted bunting showed up, like, people were lined up to this bird. It's crazy. Well, don't um, do that the bird. without practicing social distancing right now. Right, too. So cer certain things with birds, I mean, you, that's why I wanted to showcase the backyard birds, because that's that's what most of us are doing, just sitting at home. About it. I was telling people we were going to have a bird on, and I thought they would laugh, and they're like, oh my gosh, I have to watch. I have been... <laughs> well, they're all, they're so, it's something to do. Like, it's except, like, the thing about birding is it's really accessible. Like, you don't have to get the fancy binoculars. Right. Like, you can get, like, bumpy ones to start, and, you know... Bird guides are helpful, but also you don't even need to buy one. If you have a smartphone, you can also um, download the Merlin um, Bird ID app. Merlin Bird so, ID app, okay. I'll make sure yeah. to link that so, up once I start linking everything. It's by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. So it's free? It's really easy to use. So the way we, it's free. This one is free. Awesome. So this is the one I would download to start birding with. So the way it works is like 
you see a bird and you're like, oh, what is that? So you go start bird ID. And then it uses your, it asks where you are. Yeah. So I'm current location in Jamaica Plain. It asks the date. And then and it, what size was the bird? Oh my gosh. You can be like, let's pretend I saw a red wing blackbird, which are let's one pretend. of my favorite birds. You know what that looks like? Kelly. A red wing blackbird? Yes, you they're sure? beautiful. So they're Oh, I did, and I'm trying to find it. I thought I bookmarked it, but <laughs> it's a all black black bird, but it has these beautiful red and yellow um, like stripes on its oh, wings. Oh yes, yes, I've seen pictures of them. So, they are in the arboretum. Well, they're in the arboretum right now. Around they like to hang out in wetlands, so you can find them. You know, in the the tall cattails or the invasive phragmites. They're really tall. They'll hang out around there. Oh, here we go. Yes, those, when you see one of those, it's so exciting. I when love I these. One, I get really excited. I get very excited when I see one. Um, and they have a pretty distinct call. Let me see if I can bring one up right. real quick. Red winged blackbird. I love these guys. There's, let's see here. Oh, I'll probably have an ad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, an ad for chocolate. Hold on. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take a bite of okay, my lunch. Yeah. Let's see. I had to oh. you hear it. Mm. Coming. Hold on. Do you hear it? And I also, what's hilarious is when people try to spell out. The sounds of the birds, they'll like be like, sounds like really <laughs> ree, ree, ree. But okay, so back to the app. So, yeah, okay. So I saw a medium say, bird. Yeah, so let's say it's like robin sized, I think, roughly okay. the blackbird. Next. So, what were the main colors? So you can choose three. So I'd say, okay, it's black and red are my colors. And then okay, this is pretty next. easy. And then it asks. So a lot of times you can figure out. So what they're doing kind of helps figure out what kind of bird it is. Some birds like to forage or look for food on the ground. Others yeah. are usually up in the trees and swoop down. So this guy is you. You know, it's it's usually like in trees or bushes or um, hanging out. So. I click that and then it's creating a list of possible birds. And what do you know? It's the first suggestion <laughs> is a red wing blackbird. So it takes in all that data and is able to suggest what bird you might have seen. It's really cool and I'm I'm happy to use it. So you can I mean um, it sounds like you can bird watch just by listening too. Yes. So it's a combination. So you can just like hear it and be like, oh, I heard that. Or yep. even if you didn't see it. So I'm not very good at bird calls. I'm getting like the common ones down, but obviously, especially during migration, there's all these. Wait, different wait, 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 wait. You do bird calls? No, I don't do bird calls. I hear. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was say. <laughs> but um, yeah, so you know, you don't have to be amazing or know all these birds. You can get started by just you know, looking up the common ones and branching out from there and knowing the different like sizes of birds and different beaks. And so, when this is over and we can go wherever, what's a place that's great in Boston or Massachusetts to do some, once you've started, you know, you've done your backyard birding and you want to branch out and it's safe to leave. Yeah. Where would you suggest? Um, so there's lots. So there's lots of um, they're burning hot spots. Um, so I like to go, I go to the Forest Hill Cemetery in Jamaica Plain. Okay. There's, you can usually see a lot of hawks there. There's a pond that has a lot of waterfowl, so different duck species. Um, there's a cemetery I haven't been to yet that now to the public, but hopefully when this ends, it will reopen. It's called the Mount Auburn Cemetery. 
I think I it's heard. in that's a great place. Cambridge or Watertown, um, something like that. That's apparently like a like birding like mecca. Like all the birders oh. go there. All right. Um, you can also Jamaica Pond and the Emerald Necklace. There's a lot of great birds along there. Um, I go and there's some good ducks there right now. I've seen a wood duck, which is a very there's vibrant geese too. Duck. Yes, there's lots of geese. <laughs> um, so that's a good spot. And just the Arboretum, of course. The Arboretum I've seen. I saw a, but a, some tufted tit mice there the other day. And um, I saw a ruby crowned kinglet, which is a very little bird, uh, the <laughs> other day. So there's Can some. Can you write all this down? Yes. <laughs> I've been writing the birds just in my phone app, but I plan to get a journal. Um, but yeah, so that's my recommendations for getting into birding. They also make- um, It was great. They also make guides for just, so warblers are a type of bird that there's like a zillion of them and they're really hard to identify for me. Okay. Like, but there's a whole, like just a warbler guide. Look at all these warblers. Whoa! Like I can't ID all those. Like, have you seen a lot of them? I've seen a lot, um, but I don't like. I barely. I only know the more like distinct ones, like the one I saw out my window the, and others. But then there's a whole world we didn't even get into, which is the shorebirds down at the beach. Those are like my favorite. Oh, I know that you love those, right? Yes, those are my favorite kind of birds. But I figured since we're mostly staying indoors, I'd just talk about the birds you might see yes. here. Well, maybe when when uh maybe if this keeps going and <laughs> we, can, we can have you back on to talk about beach birds. Yeah, beach bird. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, this sounds like something that would be really good for your mental health. Yeah, um, for sure. It's just something to do to look forward to. You know, even though we've kind of put our lives on pause. The birds have not. And right. this is kind of their more most active time is when they're migrating and breeding and making nests and breeding. I've seen food. a few breeding recently. You saw who breeding? Birds, I've seen some birds breeding. <laughs> There's a roof across from my house that just is like a, is it know, like a bird nightclub. A really like sexy roof. They go there and hook up and like, yeah, it's like on my porch, like, yeah, what like a creep watching them. I mean, I think they're breeding. You they probably dancing. <laughs> oh man! So do you have any other um, things that you've been doing? Obviously, birding is fantastic, and you're really, really knowledgeable about it. But are there other things you've been doing for your mental health during this? Um, I mean, I could be better. I have been like watching the boob tube a lot, which I mean, that's okay. I don't want to okay. feel bad about it. Um, so watching some series on that. Um, I've been playing with my pet rats a lot. Can we uh, see them? Yes, let's go get them. Okay. Well, I think you. there are some people watching who would love to see your rats. Come here, BB. So Stephanie okay. loves birds, but she also really, really loves rats. She's been a rat mom for... Here is one of the raddies. Wow. Which one's that? I'm sorry, I should know. Uh, you should know. This is uh, Laughing Gravy. It's her <laughs> And she is named after um, a dog in the 19, a comedic duo from the 1930s named Laurel and Hardy. They have a dog named Laughing Gravy. <laughs> so she's very, she's very sweet and cute. And then the other one, let me go get her. Hold on. Pets have been really great during all of this. I know that my pickle and my Rick keep me sane <laughs> and um stephanie is right this one is like, this Where is lady bird. lady bird lady bird so she's named after uh on king of the hill they have a dog named lady bird which is obviously named after lbj's wife first lady very but familiar with king of the hill she's named after lady bird from king of the hill those are great names. How long? I know you've had a couple of rats. How long have you been a rat mom? 
These are my third batch of rats since in my adult, I am 32 years old. <laughs> <laughs> uh these are yeah my third batch they um so since i was 28 i guess adam surprised me on my 28th birthday oh. with a cage saying we're getting rats <laughs> um but i had rats when i was little so when i was uh you know in elementary school i had rats and I'm really they're happy really that they are the first rat guests i've had on so far mm -hmm. so they, They're doing great. They're naturals. Yep, yeah, they are very sweet. So playing with your pets, if you have pets, mm -hmm. is definitely great. For it's your been cool. Health. I wish I had a dog to like get me out of bed sooner, but yeah, you know, in time. I've been uh, been kind of like, let's get a dog. I've been floating it. I don't know how Pickle and Rick would feel, but they'd be very angry. <laughs> I don't know. They're like super friendly. Like mm -hmm. they just don't like. Um, well, Pickle runs the house, so Pickle does run the house. Yeah. Like if she told me I had to get off right now of mm -hmm. the broadcast, I would. She's in charge. I've, I've, um, I'm so I started I'm a new thing yesterday. Oh, what? Um, to sort of marry the Instagram, my Instagram with my Facebook. And I'm going to do this for the rest of the upcoming shows. But I put up in my story um, a space for people to ask you questions. And I got, mm -hmm. um, two <laughs> I got two questions for you. So the first one is from a lovely person named Grace. And oh, Grace. Grace would like to know, do you prefer Fenway Franks or Simcoe's hot dogs? <laughs> That's like a very difficult um, thing to answer because they I, both mean certain things. I agree. But I, like, I just, I, I got to go with Fenway Franks. I have to. But like a Simcoe hot dog is very nostalgic, you know? But I love it's the Franks. hot dogs. And I think that they're open for safe takeout during all of this. So Simco? <laughs> I've just been eat, I've just been making hot dogs at home and eating them like nonstop. Like I'm I gonna turn it off. Hot dogs yet, so whatever. I've lost count of how many I've had, but I can't wait for the Gali house and Jamaica Plain to open back up. So I can get a hot dog That's basket. That's the first meal is um, a hot dog basket from Galway. That's the first meal. Yes, absolutely. We'll meet. Um, all right, we have one more question from the audience. This one is from uh, Ms. Delta Ambrose. <laughs> and it is, what is your favorite brand and style of mustard? I'm not answering <laughs> <laughs> the um the what's like the a step up from like yellow mustard the like the there's stone ground there's like irish I'm, style i'm a trash person kelly i don't no, know i'm actually very refined because i have multiple mustard tastes and uses uh-huh so you like one step up from yellow? What did you say? Like Grey Poupon Dijon? Yeah, that or the one? No, the one that the the that has like grains in it or the grain mustard. Is that a thing? Yes. That. I'm gonna get you some. Actually, Thank Delta, you. Delta, if you're watching, <laughs> if you could send a a care package to Stephanie of a variety of mustards so that she can find her true mustard love during all of this. I think that would be nice. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be, I'd be, I'd very appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank, so, thank you Delta for the thoughtful question. <laughs> thank you Delta. And thank you everyone for watching right now. Um, there's quite a few of you. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. Um, so before we wrap up, there's a couple things I always like to ask. Um, TV, movie, music, books, games, any sort of recommendations that you have uh, um, during all of this? I have, I've yet to get the same answer from anyone, so. 
TV, um, I haven't been doing too much. I've been watching a fair amount of House Hunters, uh, yelling at House Hunters and House Hunters International has been good, getting very angry at it. Is it because <laughs> you're moving that you're watching that or? It's just, I don't know, it's funny. It's funny to see couples that have completely different expectations for a house and still come to some like bad decision. Um, and I started. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Delta. <laughs> I started Little Fires Everywhere, which is fine. Oh, um, yeah. I want to watch that, I, I yeah, think. Obviously, Tiger King was a thing. What was it um, called? What? Little Fires Everywhere? No, oh, the last show that you just said? No, Tiger King or whatever. What's it called? I don't yeah. know if I've heard of that one. Shut up. Don't. I <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure. You're dressed like Carol Baskin right now. Who's Carol Baskin? This is how I dress on Fridays. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is my um, Friday looks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Tiger King's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, books. Um, I read some adult, young adult novels novel called uh, The True Diary of a Part-Time Indian, which was good. And I don't know, I'm actually in a book lull, so I'm taking yeah. suggestions. All right. Um, yeah, that's about it. And then I know you gave us some bird resources. Yes. Just, are there any so other? The Merlin bird app. Merlin um, app. bird app. And then yep. what, was the, what was the first book called? Oh, Drawing. so the, the one, this one is the one that has all the beautiful illustrations. So the Sibley Guide to Birds. Sibley Guide to Birds. And then, um, so when the weather gets better, or not weather, but when we're allowed to meet in groups again, um, there is an organization called the Feminist Bird Club that um, I've gone on walks. You've told with. me about it, yeah, tell the audience. There's a young woman that leads the walks. Um, they have a Twitter account. There's a Facebook page. And when we're allowed to congregate again, there will be bird walk events. And I can post them on Facebook. Kelly could share them. But share them. they're free. You just got to show up. And, you know, it's so birding can be a pretty, like, uh, intense male-dominated field, weirdly. And people get oh. very competitive, very aggressive with it at times. And wow. yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, but so this bird club was made as more of like a, a safe space for like being a novice and, um, you know, very just, and it, men can go to it too. I, the walk I did was not all female. There was a couple dudes there. So, um, it, I felt, I enjoyed it a lot That's and awesome. there's a whole website called, yeah, ebird.org. So it's e the letter E, org. like an elephant. So eBird, yeah, e like electronic bird. <laughs> electronic <org>. bird. <laughs> and there, um, that's a good place. So people will go birding and upload their list of birds that they saw at a location. So you know what to look for. And it just has a lot of data on birds around. So that's a good resource. Those are amazing resources. And this weekend, I swear, I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do, I'm still, I'm new and I'm figuring this all out. I think what I'm going to do is do a recap every week with like mm -hmm. of all the people who were on and the resources that they gave. With oh, like, that's a good idea. Um, like it. it's, yeah. it's annoying to go back into the video and try and do it. So I'm figuring yeah. that out. I promise everyone I will have resource lists for you coming soon. Mm -hmm. Um so we're near the end of our show, and I like to give uh, our broadcast, I don't know what to call this, but um, I like to give each guest a moment to give inspiring words and final thoughts and whatever you want to say to everyone watching about lockdown, and it's also an opportunity for me to wear my sunglasses collection. Yes. So, Stephanie, take it away. Your final words, thoughts. Um I'd say remain hopeful. You know, it's not the worst of times. If you have pets, hug them. Call your family and friends. Do video chats. Um, that's been very helpful. Uh, 
take your, if you're on meds, take them, make sure you have your supply and uh, just keep, keep in touch with people. I've been saved by this by talking to friends all the time and we're all just, you know, doing in it together. It's, we're not alone. It's my Love final that. thoughts. Those are great final words. We are not alone. Nope. Well, it's Friday, y'all. Woo! Um, my bird shirt. Oh, There's her shirt has a bird and, and a rat on it. And you got that at Boomerangs, right? Sure did. In Jamaica Plain, <laughs> also other places. Great thrift shop and organization aids action. Um, so I want to thank you, Stephanie, for thank being you. on. And you taught me so much. For being open to birds. And the bird I'm world. open to birds now. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people found this very useful and hopefully entertaining. And um, you're like one of the most smart people that I know. So I'm honored to have had you on. Thank you. <laughs> the rats crawl all over you. I have to put, they're very, cur they're curious. Yeah, no, they're stars now. Mm -hmm. um, so no shows on the weekends because Kelly needs to not do things all the time. But mm -hmm. we will have another show for you or broadcast. I don't even know what to call it. We'll have a lockdown lunch for you on Monday at 12 o'clock, as long as all the technical stuff keeps working. Um, and we are going to have a beautiful, hilarious person, Paloma Valenzuela from La Gringa Loca Productions. She has a web series called The Pineapple Diaries. She's also doing a show on Instagram Live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Um, we're going to talk about that. I'm sure she's going to have an amazing outfit. She always does. <laughs> and we're going to talk about being an artist, actress, director, writer, producer during this time. Um, awesome. So thank you again, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank you for everyone watching so much. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you'll continue to tune in. Happy Friday. Have a great weekend. Please wash your hands. Please stay home. Please stay safe. Thank and you. yeah, love y'all. Bye. Bye.